Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Monica Saini from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today, I will talk about the module Forensic Anthropologist as an Expert Witness under the Forensic Anthropology paper. Through this module, students will be able to know how an anthropologist work as an forensic expert and we will also study his contribution towards the medical legal processes. The forensic anthropology is best known as the branch of physical anthropology which is used to solve the criminal cases for legal issues. More broadly, it is the discipline which is used to apply the knowledge of physical anthropology as well as other fields of biology and physical sciences which are relevant to solve criminal cases or to identify a person or the body of a person for medical legal purposes. The routine scope of discipline is the identification of skeletonized, badly decomposed or otherwise unidentified human remains. Quite often, forensic anthropologists are involved in the identification of living persons. The range of interest of forensic anthropology have been expanded as anthropological expertise is used in the identification and aging of living individual. In the past few years, specialists applying anthropological knowledge and associated disciplines are involved in aging juvenile preparators, identifying individuals, taped on video surveillance system, etc. And that is, it is becoming more interdisciplinary. A forensic anthropologist is the expert who applies the anthropological knowledge for the medical legal purpose. It may be in the form of identification of skeletal remains or identification through physical features that is somatoscopy or interviewing the families of deceased through the knowledge of socio-cultural dimensions. Now we will study the identification process in the medical legal cases. Identification is important for living as well as dead for medical legal process. The forensic anthropological involvement in the medical legal community begins with and is based upon an exhaustive case report including as appropriate documentation of the methods of identification and accurate reconstruction of trauma that occurs at or around the time of death as well as after death and an estimate of the post-mortem interval or time since death. If a case goes to trial, this report becomes the core of the forensic anthropologist testimony. Thus, on one hand, an anthropologist play a vital role in the identification process, on the other hand, act as a forensic expert, as a witness in a courtroom. In 1969, Modi stated that beyond the elimination of non-human elements, the identification process undertakes to provide opinions regarding age, sex, race, stature and similar other characteristics of each individual involved as may lead to his or her recognition. Alphonse Bertillon, who was the chief of the identification of Bureau, is best known for the development of the science of anthropology in which an individual is identified by means of bodily measurements. 
and these measurements include standing height sitting height length and breadth of head length of right ear span of the outstretched arm length of the left foot length of the left middle finger etc forensic anthropological services are typically requested when human remains are decomposed burnt fragmentary cremated dismembered fully skeletonized or otherwise unidentifiable by virtual means scenarios in which a forensic anthropologist may consult include burials structural fires explosions such as the bombing mass graves commercial and clandestine cremations and mass fatality incidents more often forensic anthropologist is involved in the identification of living but can work as an expert when a body is mutilated or found multiple skeleton at the scene of crime or disaster through their knowledge of human and non human skeleton forensic anthropologist are now taking an important role in other forensic legal matters like human rights human migration genocides etc thus one can say that a forensic anthropologist is the expert who applies the anthropological knowledge for medical legal purpose it may be in the form of identification of skeletal remains or identification through physical features that is somatoscopy or interviewing the families of deceased through the knowledge of socio cultural dimensions now i will tell you about the process of criminal investigation the principal purpose of criminal investigation is to provide answers to certain questions relating to the crime these include the identity of victim the exact place at which the offence occurred how the crime was committed and the means employed in its commission the time of attack the motion or object of attack the identity of the offender or offenders criminal investigation is employed also in the search for an interrogation of material witnesses who are able and willing to give competent and relevant testimony against the suspect or offender and in the reconstruction of facts connected with the crime in order the process of identification of skeletal remains in 2000 nandi said that human bones have been under study in different parts of the world by different researchers mainly the anatomist physical anthropologist and physician all of them have taken considerable interest in the comparative analysis to determine their origin sex age stature race etc bones especially the long bones played an important role right from the onset of medical revolution in understanding the physiological racial and ethnographic affinities besides 
providing the major forensic experts with the anatomical and compositional agenda if a number of bones are recovered on the scene of crime there is no difficulty to establish the source but a single small bone may make the task difficult bone of domestic animals such as dogs goats and pigs etc are usually mistaken as human bones entire or part of the skeleton deceived may of great help for identifying the bone one should have through knowledge of human and comparative anatomy skeleton remnants received as forensic exhibits are of immense importance in the scientific investigation of crime these may be discovered in varying conditions the question of examination of skull or bone arises when the death of individual has occurred in the following conditions natural accidental or intentional death in the first category when the individual has died as a result of natural death in the second category when the death has resulted from some incident that is train accident aeroplane disaster earthquake or any other natural calamities in the third category where the death has been caused by some person intentionally by killing the individual or himself the examination of skeletal remains of this category has got more medical legal significance when the bone or the skull complete or fragments are available at the scene of crime or burial ground a number of salient questions must receive special consideration such as whether the remains are of human or non human origin if human whether they are of male or female sex do they represent one or more individuals the stature of the individual to whom the bones belong the age of the individual to whom the bones belong the probable time of death whether the bones have been cut sawn burnt or not by the animal and what was the probable cause of death now we will study the various sectors or fields in which forensic anthropologists play their important role in criminal investigation as an forensic expert the first field is determination of sex the sex of the bone can be determined from such as skull pelvis femur humerus radius ulna tibia and fibula it is determined from the distinguishing marks of the male and female bones determination is accurate in more than 90% cases in adults pelvis or skulls certain measurements of humerus radius ulna femur tibia and fibula are also helpful the next field is determination of number of individuals to find out whether the bones recovered belong to one or more individuals they are arranged in the order of a skeleton if there is no duplication and the bones fit with each other they belong to one individual otherwise they come from more than one individual the next field is 
estimation of stature if the complete skeleton of the individual is available the total length of the skeleton is measured and about 1 to 1 and 1/2 inch are added for soft parts for calculating the approximate stature if only hands are available then it is considered that the total length from the tip of middle finger of one hand to the same point of the same finger of the opposite hand when the hands are fully stretched if only one hand is available then it is multiplied by 2 and approximately 6 inches are added for one collar bone and multiplied by 2 about 1 to 1 and 1/2 inch are added for the sternum it is possible to estimate stature of individual from long bones by multiplying its maximum length by a multiplication factor with 1 and 1/2 to 2 inch multiplication factors are given by different authors with slight variations for example the humerus has the multiplication factor that is 5.2 6.5 in case of radius 6 in case of ulna 3.7 in case of femur 4.3 in case of tibia and fibula has 4.4 multiplication factor the next field is determination of age the age may be determined with certain amount of accuracy from the presence of teeth in the mandible and maxilla and the extent of their wear cement deposit closing and resorption of teeth roots and transparency of teeth as also form the formation of the center of ossification next field is time of death it is extremely difficult to determine the precise death of the individual by examining bones but a guess may be made on the basis of the existence of fractures order and condition of soft parts and ligaments they also tell us about the time of death in case of fracture the bone is dissected and examined for callus the next field is examination of bones ends of the long bones should be carefully examined to find out if they have been cut by sharp weapons or not through animals and medulla eaten away newton canal is examined for the presence of red arsenic or some other stains to ascertain if the bones came from dissecting room of medical college or laboratory the last sector is identification through superimposition identity of deceased person is possible by superimposition technique if the skull of the deceased and the life size photograph of the suspected victim is available negative of the identification photograph is prepared by marking certain anatomical landmarks negative of the skull is also prepared by marking the similar landmarks the two negatives are then superimposed and a positive print is prepared if the position of eyes nose ears and chins correspond then it is identical in case of non identity the various positions differ in order to confirm or rectify the result the negative of identify photo is placed under the glass of camera and 
the skull is set in position to coincide with it it is then photographed and the two negatives are superimposed and developed the same result is found as it is clear that the skull did belong to the persons whose identity photographs we possess so students now we will be studying the identification process in the living persons alphonse bertillon who was the chief of the identification bureau of paris he developed the science of anthropology in which an individual is identified by means of his bodily measurements identification in the living person is done through a number of ways and these ways include anthropometry somatoscopy fingerprint hair blood handwriting teeth voice gait mannerism dna and bodily marks first i will talk about the anthropometry identification can be done by taking a number of measurements such as standing height sitting height length and the breadth of head the length of right ear span of the outstretched arm length of the left foot and the length of the hand under the somatoscopy it studies or it tells you about the observation on the living such as hair eyes complexion shape of the nose ears and chin a fingerprint is an individual characteristics no two people have been found with the exact same fingerprint pattern impressions left by the finger friction ridge on a surface such as tool handle glass door etc prints may be collected by revealing them with a dusting of black powder and then lifted with a piece of clear tape to identify a person race sex age blood groups type of injury or dna can be determined from hair in living as well as in dead next criteria for identification which is used for the identification of living person is blood from blood samples blood group system detection and dna can be determined to identify a person or a suspect whereas the handwriting is a skill that is personal to the individual the relation of character shape and the style of writing are visually different from one to another the handwriting identification it is a process to identify or verify the writer of a handwriting document the next source of identification for the living individual is teeth the special feature in the teeth that is torsion angulation staining cracks caries sealing etc and the bony deformities serve as special identification features the next identification source as voice gait and mannerism voice of a person gait and mannerism are different in every individual so also these can serve as a means of identification in the end we have body marks identification can be done through moles scars tattoo marks birth marks dimple bite marks deformities and occupational marks now i will tell you about the role of forensic anthropologist as an investigator the goal of the forensic anthropologist 
is same as the medical expert or the forensic scientist a forensic anthropologist seeking to provide a thorough description achieve a personal identification and give opinion about the circumstances of death the anthropologist collects and document all associated physical evidence and see that it is transferred to the appropriate analysis in effect the work of the anthropologist overlaps the work of both the crime scene investigator and the medical examiner the specific anthropologist for the case is dictated by the circumstances of the cases and the material to be examined an anthropologist with osteological knowledge can maximize the information gained from the skeletonized human remains an anthropologist with archaeological knowledge can optimize the recovery of the buried evidence from a crime scene an anthropologist with socio cultural knowledge may interface more effectively with families and facilitate interviews particularly in multicultural circumstances overall it can be said that forensic anthropologist is one of the important investigator to solve the criminal cases or to identify the suspected or deceased there are three major stages of investigation in a typical case the first case is collection of verbal evidence that is generally done by police but anthropologist can be called upon the second is collection of physical evidence it can be done by forensic scientist or anthropologist the third is analysis of evidence that can be carried out by an forensic expert thus forensic anthropologist becomes involved in the entire process of interviewing searching records and gathering physical evidences this is when socio cultural knowledge applies in the practical aspect this practice is helpful to expand the definition of forensic anthropologist to include all anthropologist who apply their knowledge to legal issues not just the physical anthropologist so students let us summarize this module the forensic anthropology is best known as the branch of physical anthropology which is used to solve the criminal cases for legal issues a forensic anthropologist is the expert who applies the anthropological knowledge for medical legal purposes it may it may be in the form of identification of skeletal remains or identification through physical features that is somatoscopy or interviewing the families of deceased through the knowledge of socio cultural dimensions identification is important for living as well as for dead for criminal investigation the process of criminal investigation takes place through identification and attempt to provide an answer to solve the cases the principal purpose of criminal investigation is to provide the answer to certain questions relating to the crime these include the identity of victim the exact place at which the offense occurred 
how the crime was committed and the means employed in its commission the time of attack the motion or subject of attack and the identity of the offender or offenders the criminal investigation is employed also in the search and for interrogation of material witnesses who are able and willing to give competent and relevant testimony against the suspect or offender and in the reconstruction of facts connected with the crime in order a forensic anthropologist seeking to provide a thorough description achieve a personal identification and give opinion about the circumstances of death the anthropologist he collects and documents all the associated physical evidence and he see that it is transferred to the appropriate analyst in effect the work of the anthropologist overlaps the work of both the crime scene investigator and the medical examiner the specific anthropologist for the case is dictated by the circumstances of the cases and the material to be examined thank you